Good morning to all our online viewers. Welcome to Let's Talk It Over. I'm Lido Rama, the, your moderator for today. This webinar series is organized by the Master of Arts in Nursing program under the Faculty of Management and Development Studies. For this episode, our speaker will discuss about composure behavior for adv advanced practice nurse. If you can remember, we have our pilot episode last July 18th wherein Dr. Balabagno discussed nursing theories and explanatory frameworks in research in developing contexts. Today's LTIO will teach us about composure model of intervention under a framework authored by a Filipino nurse. Before we call our speaker, let me share some reminders. We will have a Q&A uh, portion after the presentation. You can put your questions in the comment box of the UPOU Networks website and at the UPOU um, Facebook page. Now let's start our webinar. Our speaker has uh, various experience, both from nursing service and academia. She rose from the ranks as a staff nurse to, to a head nurse at the University of the um, University of East Ramon Magsaysay Medical Center from 1963 to 1967. She's a recipient of several awards at, and distinctions just to cite a few, she is an outstanding alumni already for, for 2015, bestowed for the first time by the University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Medical Center Board of Trustees. Florence Nightingale Award of Excellence by the University of the East Ramon Magsaysay uh, Me Medical Center. Um, and the most outstanding alumni in nursing awarded by the University of the Philippines Alumni Association in 2007, the Anastasia Hiron Tupas award, award in 2008, the highest award given by the Philippine Nursing Association to the Outstanding Professional Nurse and the Outstanding Professional of the Year in the Field of Nursing in 2009, given by the Professional Regulation Commission. She is currently holding a position in the Professional Regulation Com Commission or PRC as one of the members of the Board of Nursing and has been appointed as chair of the Career Progression Specialization Program in Nursing and the official designated representative for the quality assurance of the Philippine Qualification Framework, PQF NCC work, Working Groups. She's a member of the Technical Panel on Nursing Education in the Commission on Higher Education. She's, she participated actively in the development of the outcomes-based nursing curriculum, which is currently offered in the country. At present, she's a member of the Technical Working Group on the Comparability Analysis of the Bachelor's Degree of the New Zealand Qualification Authority and the Philippines, specifically in nursing education. Please let us welcome Dr. Car Carmelita C. De Vinagracia. Good morning and thank you so much for the kind and generous introduction Mr. Lito Rama. And greetings to the people behind this session. The Dean of Faculty of Management and Development Studies, Joan Serrano. The Dean of the UP College of Nursing, my friend, Dr. Sheila Bonito. and the chair of the UPOU, Master of Arts in Nursing, former student, Pia Cabanes, the Multimedia Center Director, Luisa Gelisan, maraming maraming salamat po sa pag nyo sa akin. And I'm very proud to share with you my paper a nursing intervention model, which I call the composure behavior for advanced practice nurse. For the flow of my discussion this afternoon, next slide, please. I talk just the highlight of composure behavior of the advanced nurse practitioners or which I call the APN or ANP, the theoretical framework for this model, 
my research protocol, the effect of the composure behavior of the ANP, the wellness outcome, and the application of the composure behavior intervention model. What is a composure behavior? Maybe you'll ask me, what is composure? Being composed? No. Composure is an acronym which stands for the following. C for competence, C-O-M for competence. P, presence and prayer. O, open-mindedness. S, stimulation. U, understanding. R, respect and relaxation and empathy. These are sets of per performances done by the advanced nurse practitioners to the cardiac patients during the illness stage of confinement. And who are the advanced nurse practitioners in this model? They are BSN graduates, licensed to practice the profession, they have a clinical experience of at least two years and must have undergone special training in critical care nursing and a composure behavior model intervention package, which the author has adopted. So in the middle, you see the important components of the composure and the effect to the patients whom I have selected for this study, becoming well after this intervention package. Let me share with you the theoretical framework which I have adapted in this study. First and foremost, the theoretical framework in this composure behavior was influenced by the works and writings of Patricia Bender. I believe that you have heard a lot and you have read the works of Patric Patricia Penner, from novice to expert, excellence and power in clinical nursing practice. And there are five stages of skills acquisition. Novice, advanced beginner, and from the advanced beginner, the nurse practitioner became, becomes competent, proficient, and eventually an expert practitioner in the field of nursing. The other next slide, please. The other framework that has inspired me when writing or doing this particular intervention model of intervention. I made use of the adult learning principles by Knobs. And there are four major areas that I have adapted in this model. The self concept of the learner who moves from one of being dependent to being independent. The adult learner having a life-centered, task-centered or problem orientation learning. The adult principle in this model include the adult learner who brings both quantity and quality 
and his previous experiences to the new situation. And the last but not least, in this principle of knowledge, the adults are ready to learn when there is a need to know something. And I believe that these principles are considered to be the guiding tenet for every nurse, for every learner who wants to advance themselves in the field of their chosen profession. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay, this is the theoretical paradigm that I have adopted. We have the composure behavior leading to the wellness outcome of the patients and the indicators that I made use of in terms of finding out whether the client has been well after the composure behavior. Are these two outcomes, physiologic outcome, which I have evaluated in terms of vital signs, chest pain, including the hemoglobin count of the patient. On the other hand, the biobehavioral outcome were evaluated in terms of physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual. Moving on to my next slide. Okay, what is competence? How did I evaluate the competence of my participants in this model? It is a specialized care management in cardiovascular nursing. The nurse should have an in-depth knowledge and clinical expertise demonstrated by a quick, precise, logical health assessment accurate focus on health history. Must be proficient in analyzing and interpreting diagnostic as well as therapeutic procedures and in line with collaboration, the nurse should be competent in relaying certain findings and outcomes of her care to the members of the health team. That is how I have evaluated the competence of the advanced practice nurse. Presence, it's the existence of the human being to be one with another person like the patient during times of need the use of therapeutic communication, active listening, and the use of the hands as a healing touch. The next part of my composure behavior is prayer. The nurse, as you can see in this slide, is in the process of having adoration, expression of relationship in God through silence, reflection, and the use of religious readings. Another area of my composure model is open-mindedness. The nurse who is being receptive to new ideas, patients' preferences, and opinions related to her health condition and practices are being offered. Next to open-mindedness is stimulation. It is providing encouragement that conveys hope and strength 
guidance in the form of giving explanation and supervision when doing certain procedures to patients. I believe that this is a major area of the composure behavior of the nurse, it's stimulating the patient through encouragement, through proper explanation, and asking her to demonstrate whatever explanation you have given to her. The use of complimentary words or phrases like very good, that's right, with a smile, is definitely a part of the stimulation rendered by the advanced practice nurse. Understanding. My dear audience, this is an important ingredient for the composure behavior, conveying interest and acceptance, not only of patient's condition, but also his entire being. Remember that our patients need us. It's a way of making the patient feel important and unique while he is confined in bed. Respect. How does a Filipino nurse respect a patient when confined to bed? When admitted for diagnostic procedure, acknowledging our presence, the use of preferred name in addressing patient, like the use of po and opo as a sign of giving positive regard. Take note, these are important attributes of a Filipino nurse. And I hope that those who are on the age audience right now would continue to provide respect, not only to our elders, but to, to patients who are admitted under our care. After respect, is relaxation. Can you see me in this slide doing the teaching strategies for the nurses who will exemplify the composure behavior in terms of relaxation? It is an exercise. That involves an alternate tension and relaxation of selected groups of muscle. The selected group of muscle is tensed for at least five counts and then release slowly for another five counts. A lot of efforts have been done to demonstrate how nurses can also teach patients to relax while they are at the sick bed. Moving on is empathy. This is my last part of my composure behavior. Empathy is having the nurse feel what the patients are feeling at the time they are admitted in the hospital. Regardless of the setting, be in the community, be in the hospital setting, 
be in the clinic, I believe that nurses, especially our APN, must provide empathy to their patients. It is the allocation of time to reflect on the verbal and nonverbal messages, accurate response to the current emotional state of the patient, validation if action is clear, employing language at the level of patient's understanding and allowing the patient to be what he or she at the moment. Remember that patients need our helping hand, our listening ear, and our heart. That is empathy. So if the nurse, the APN, is able to really implement the composure behavior package, we expect that wellness outcome will be achieved. It's a state of well-being, a coordinated, integrated living pattern that involves the dimensions of wellness, which includes physiologic, physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual domains. Take note of this composition of the wellness, the status of the patient. This is the research protocol that I made use of in this particular model. I have the study group A and the study group B. The study group A were given a pretest prior to the intervention model. And after which a post-test was done in order to determine the degree of wellness of the patient after the intervention. The other study group is letter is B. For your information, in the study group A, a partial application of the intervention model was applied. While in the second group of the study, of the study, the implementation of the composure model was done in full. I omitted prayer and presence in the first study group, while in the study group, second group, the full composure model intervention has been applied. Collection of data from the two groups. The three groups include the traditional group, meaning there was no intervention applied or given to the first, to, to the traditional group. Whereas in study A and study group B, there are application, partial, Composure behavior intervention on the first group. And the study group B, they receive all the intervention package of the composure model. Analysis and interpretation were done in order to determine whether there were significant differences among the three groups of the population I have studied. The next slide is the application. 
Can decomposure behavior be applied? Nursing service ad administrators? Yes. In fact, in the heart center where I did the application of the my composure behavior, they made some form of a study applying the composure behavior. And in fact, in two hospitals, one in NCR and one in the South or Mindanao, they made use of the composure model in order to determine the validity and reliability of this study. Nursing educators and curriculum planner, why not? They can inject some of the variables that I have studied under the composure model. Nursing research, especially, it can be done. This study can be replicated. The model that I have used in terms of the intervention package can be utilized. Could be one or two variables or all the variables if one is really interested to conduct such particular intervention model as a study. The PRC Board of Nursing, this particular study or model has been discussed with the PRC Board of Nursing and they made a positive remark in terms of this intervention package. Consumers of nursing care. If this particular intervention package can be done to our patients, to our people even at home, those who are in the community setting, this could be a meaningful intervention that can be applied by a nurse, by any nurse, especially a nurse who has advanced herself in terms of practice and in terms of education. Next slide, please. And this is where I made this particular intervention package done to at least 40 patients in this one of the most magnet, I would say magnet hospital in the country. Thank you, Philippine Heart Center. My caring mentors, you can see Sister Letty in front, and also one of the best mentors that I have, Dr. Federico David, who made a critic of my intervention model. In the middle, you can see the author. And at the back, you can see the different nursing leaders. Lydia Manahan, who recorded this, the doctoral proceedings that I made, a UPCN faculty, and a doctorate student at the time I made my this particular scientific paper. Dr. Cara de la Peña, the chair of the Board of Nursing of PRC at that time. Dr. Cecilia M. Laurent, the Dean of the UP College of Nursing. 
and the late Dr. Euphemia Octaviano, also the Board of Nursing, PRC. And lastly, but not the least, my two mentors, Dr. Gailan, a faculty of the UERM College of Nursing and the MTTC, who provided me guidance in terms of how to mentor and teach the APN in the Heart Center. And alas, who supported me a lot, the Dean of the UERM College of Nursing, Mrs. Evangelina M. Dumla. Thank you, my caring mentors. And definitely, I would like to share with you my family who supported me all along. I would just mention my late husband who is at the back and the rest are my children and grandchildren. Gail, a nurse. Glenn, my PT graduate also of USD. And the youngest son, boy, who is a financial management graduate. Thank you for the support moral obligation, as well as financial support of my family. And lastly, next slide. I would like to at least as part of moving forward, although the gender has been a part of my study, I would like that those who would like to move forward and maybe replicate my study to consider certain gender issues. And the first question is, how do the components of composure differ between men and women? Are there? Of course. Next slide, please. I would like to just emphasize that when one utilizes the composure model as an intervention, we have to make sure that men and women have we equal access to the elements. One has to prevent gender bias. And one is to consider doing gender blind researches. In this way, we are able to really respect certain areas that are very important to consider right now. And that is the gender of our patients. In trying to analyze further the composure model in terms of competence, it is very important that the nurse the APM must be able to inject certain principles of what she has learned from anatomy and physiology, looking at the differences of the anatomical and physiological structures of men and women. Remember that women has to undergo certain physiologic cycles such as reproduction, pregnancy, lactation, and many more. So those factors 
have to be considered as you move on dealing with this composure model of intervention. Likewise, let's move on to the next slide. What opportunities can composure model give to mainstream gender in research? It is very important in our research methodology to look again at the differences of our work sampling a man and a woman. Do they differ? Yes, of course. We have to also consider in the inclusion and exclusion criteria, we should be balanced in terms of the selection of our samples. Ethical consideration, take note that regardless whether you are doing patient care, in research you are also observing certain ethical consideration. Ethics that you should be guided as a researcher. In the discussion of result and discussion, again, it is very important to give a balance in terms of our findings, in terms of how we are dis going to discuss the flaw of our research, the flaw of our scientific studies, so that at least we have not forgotten to balance, to balance and become sensitive in determining and in treating men and women in our chosen study. Next slide, please. What opportunities can composure model give to mainstream gender in policy recommendation? It is very important to know the impact of gender differences to these composure elements that I have cited. It is very important that in the development of competence, of the advanced nurse practitioner to include nurse awareness on gender differences. Next slide, please. In conclusion, let me cite what I have learned, what I have acquired in this particular intervention package that the Vinagrasha's model of composure behavior is embedded on the philosophy that advanced nurse practitioners are competent nurses who have integrated bio-behavioral interventions in their practice setting so that holistic patient's wellness outcome is greatly achieved. And I want to insert in my concluding prayer to include gender as a part of this study as the advanced nurse practitioner implement the composure behavior as a nursing intervention. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for the great discussion, Dr. Divina Grasha. Um, just to uh, uh, highlight um, the discussion, we learned from the discussion that composure model was influenced by Patricia Banner and the adult learning principles of Knowles um, from the framework 
the framework also uh, defined what an advanced nurse practitioner is. Um, so it is a nurse with who is like a BSN graduate, um, passed the licensure exam, and has at least uh, two years um, clinical experience um, to be um, to be considered also as an advanced nurse practitioner. Um, the framework um, defined uh, or recommended the nurse should have like uh, special training, like critical care um, nursing and the composure behavior model. So we also learned from the discussion that the composure, the composure is actually an acronym. Um, COM um, stands for competence, P for presence and prayer, um, O for open-mindedness, um, S for stimulation, um, U for understanding, R for res respect and relaxation, and E for empathy. So um, we also learned that the composure, um, composure model um, can also be applied not only at bedside, but also in the nursing service or in nurse, nursing admin. Um, for further, also for nursing research, as well as um, nursing um, education and for the uh, consumers uh, or, or our patients in, in nursing. Now let's move on to our um, open forum. Um, the questions will be coming for our online um, viewers. Um, we encourage you to send your questions on our chat box sections of the UPOU network website and the UPOU Facebook page. For our first question here, um, so um, a lot of our, um, A lot of our nurses right now, like Filipino nurses, they're, they're not only practicing in the Philippines, but also like um, across the globe. So one question that was posed here is like, um, can we use the theory um, and remove some aspects um, of it like prayer? Definitely. In fact, the reason why I accepted this particular session it is because I wanted to influence your master of art in nursing. Am I correct? Your graduate, your, uh, your students to explore and find out whether, you know, this is a, a one shot deal that I made at the Philippine Heart Art Center. And I want it validated, finding out whether my, uh, methodology that I have used uh, are considered to be reliable. And that was the reason why I accepted uh, or I approve the, uh, the making of another paper at the, another PhD student uh, in the South. I think it's in Mindanao. And uh, one Another student, another PhD student asked or requested me to replicate some variables that I have adapted. As you can see in my study, there were seven variables, composure. So they, they wanted that partial, a partial list of my composure behavior be replicated in order to determine whether it is really applicable or effective to our Filipino clients or patients. Yes, you may use it, provided that proper acknowledgement or recognition or permission from the author is granted. Thank you for that question. Thank you, um, Dr. Divina Gracia. So for, uh, we have another um, uh, comment here on, on, on the UPOE network. So um, first, they, they, they would like to thank you. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a great lecture. Um, so it's one so of the question here, um, the, one of the par uh, participants would like to teach um, their students. Um, so wh where can they, they're asking where can they get the article? Uh, the article? The paper is now with UP College of Nursing. They own the paper. Okay, so it's in a UP College of Nursing. It's yeah. in our library. 
Exactly. Yes. It's, thank, it's thank, you. thank you, Bob. And um, another question here. Um, can you please add more value behavioral variables? Um, we can ask that, that they can um, further assess, like regarding the, you know, I think um, when they're assessing the um, the uh, uh, wellness status, so uh, they're asking if they can add more bio behavioral variables. Of course, of course. They can, they can even enrich the paper. Mm -hmm. They can even enrich the paper. Uh, I have confined my biobehavioral intervention limited into four or five. It's because I was also running out of time <laughs> with the completion of this model. Thank you, Dr. Divina Gracia. Um, do you have like any suggestion like uh, for uh, like um, any other biobehavioral um, variables that you know they can add? Maybe I can ask them. <laughs> Thank you. What do they think? What additional components of biobehavioral intervention can be added? You see. May Thank I you. ask the one who asked the question? <laughs> Um, I think um, I, there are the in our like um, UPLU networks. Um, well, I hope they can uh, you know um, uh, put an, another comment under questions there, and and we 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 can always like um, read read it and and follow up. Uh, let me uh, just share with you mm -hmm. that yes. in my study. Uh, the APN that has been cited in terms of qualification. Uh, yes. Since I am the chair of the uh, career progression and, and specialization program now at PRC, I would like to let you know, share with you that we have enhanced. We are not only talking about a BSN graduate, but rather if you want to really become a fully recognized advanced practitioner in the Philippines, then there is a need for you to formalize your, your study, meaning that specialization in your area, for example, if you are a, uh, a specialist in cardiovascular nursing, your formal education should focus on this particular area, meaning there should be an in-depth formal education when i say formal education you have acquired it in a university setting like qp so that when you say you are an apn you are really competent in that field of study so there are more uh qualification framework that we have included in terms of the advanced practice nurse at the moment this is in response to our Philippine qualification framework, as well as a response to uh, the Asian referencing framework, which the Philippines is one of the uh, uh, participating country. Thank you. Thank you. Um, re regard just to clarify the one um, you're recommending, like probably like masters, and then specifically yeah, like for example, true. that's true. Um, yeah. And like, UP, UP College of Nursing, it so happened that uh, I really went into formal education in UP College of Nursing, where I have acquired my uh, my specialization in terms of med search. Thank you. And I think I'm um, UPO, UPO, um, I think for our masters, we offered like for adult health, like, um, you know, um, consultation in like um, cardiac as well as oncology. So I think yes. those are um, examples for those like advanced um, degree, I think. So uh, another uh, um, great um, comment here in our um, comment section. So um, one of our um, participants says, I really learned a lot and was inspired to conduct three group analysis. So um, I just want to quote, 
I am just wondering po, if, compli if complicated researches like this is still allowed by the hospitals po? If not, what can you advise uh, as an alternative? You know, it's, uh, it's a really a PhD scientific paper. And we really uh, deal with multiple variables. Now, in the hospital setting, especially those who are in advanced beginner and, and just competent in the field of research, I would suggest that part of the variables can be applied in terms of the composure behavior model, meaning they can select from the seven variables that I have cited, which one is really applicable in their work setting at the moment. Thank you, Doc. And another another question here um, or comment. So, um, so I, I, I want to quote. So, thank you very much for the lecture. This is very interesting. Um, may I ask Dr. Um, Carmelita if this theory can also be applied to to non patients, to nurses, for example, when checking their wellness? Yes, yes. Empathy, for example, understanding, respect. Those are important factors regardless whether you are admitted or not. It can be done in the home setting. It can be done in the community setting where you are dealing with geriatric patients or any type of all ages, you can make use of this composure behavior. Dr. Divina Gracia, so, um... Basically, I think I can recall in your lecture also, like you mentioned, it can also be applied in um, the nursing administra administration, right? And for like, um, um, basically like um, consumers um, of, of nursing, uh, as well as nursing education, just to add on that one. And I think um, we got a reply from the comments regarding, um, you know, the one earlier. So <laughs> I am thinking about stress or maybe immunity. Okay. Oh, uh-huh as a part of biobehavioral intervention. Yep, uh, or, or, um, um, or the variables, but so do you think yeah. it's a good choice? By that you can operationally define because in the application phase, you're supposed to go into the procedural. How, mm -hmm. how is caring demonstrated? How is respect being demonstrated? Sometimes, I don't know, when, when I was teaching the APN in the heart center, as if I was the actor or the actress, giving them the script on how they are going to perform when they are already in the work setting. And that is a part of the module that I have adapted. I gave them, I taught them the script, I taught them the module that has to be done. I taught them on how they are going to demonstrate the composure behavior. Thank, thank you, Dr. Devina Gracia. So I think um, your lecture um, was really great. And then a lot of nurses have been inspired about this. So there's another question here in our comment box. So um, let me call it, where can we ask for your uh, permission, pa. Can we con can we contact you? Um, oh, do you yes. have like any? Yes, uh, Doctor Ria can give you my my contact number. Okay, so they can yeah they can contact you, PO, yeah, and what we we can we can assist them in in yes. giving you um yes. your contact. I welcome I welcome everybody to make use of this particular model. Okay. Go on, go on, go on, so that it's going to be elevated into a theory and according to sister uh, Calixta Roy before she was able to really uh, call her model a theory it has to undergo a lot of researches so I convince and I encourage all the master uh, of nursing students that you have at the moment to undergo and explore all the areas of the composure model, please. <laughs> so yeah, I, I can, just... you know, that is building the image of Carmelita Divina Gracia to become a tourist. 
tourists in the Philippines. Don't, don't you think it is uh, image building for us? Perfect. Well, I agree. And yeah, it's uh, it's like elevating the uh, Filipino nursing profession, basically, as you're re representing our practice here in the Philippines. That's right. And then um, just to follow up on that one, you, do you prefer like uh, to be uh, to, for the uh, if someone wants to contact you to, to send you an, an email? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Th yeah, thank you. I, I read emails and I respond to emails. Thank you, Dr. Devin Nagrasha. Um, yeah, it's uh, as what I mentioned, your your lecture is really wonderful, and I think um, it inspires a lot of nurses. Um, so um, I think um, this is our um, last question so far. Um, um, we would like to thank Dr. Devin Nagrasha for sharing her experiences and knowledge with us. Um, now we may call on our uh, program chair, Assistant Professor Ria Valerie Cabanes, for the closing remarks. Thank you very much, um, Professor Lito. I am very, very honored and grateful that Dr. Divina Gracia, my teacher, our alumni mentor, accepted our invitation to be the speaker for this webinar. Um, we'll definitely, definitely encourage our students to use your model po. Um, just to share, Bon Divina Gracia is my first research teacher, and she also motivated me to pursue research. So <laughs> there. <laughs> Yes, well, Sir Lito, thank you very, very much, classmate, for hosting this webinar. Thank you, too, to FMDS Dean Joan Serrano for helping us implement this, to Ms. Rachel Salas for your um, tire, uh, tireless support to the program. I'd also like to thank everyone who watched and participated in this episode Again, we hope that you learned a lot um, from our speaker. We would like to thank MC, uh, headed by Director Helisa, uh, Lisa Helisa, as well for the technical assistance. Thank maraming you. maraming salamat po. Salamat sa lahat. Thank you, ma'am. Um, uh, thank you, um, classmate. So I, so I would like to thank inspired. everyone. I'm so inspired. <laughs> You made my day. <laughs> yeah, Thank it's. A, you, I think um you you did a lot of contribution like um to the nursing profession, uh, Doctor Devanagrasha. I like. I think this this frame is really you know very useful, and I think um you inspired a lot of nurses. Like not. I think um um I think this uh this will be recorded. And I think not, it not only for like Filipino nurses, but like you know um globally. Um, I'm really optimistic on the framework. And, yes. and thanks, uh, thanks once again. Yes, classmate, if I may also share, um, Dr. Manahan and Dr. Balabagno is also here with us um, oh. uh, watching your um, presentation, Dr. Divina Gracia. Next, next. I, I <laughs> recorded everything. And uh, Dr. Balabagno was also an inspiration to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. And we, we hope um, that you will attend our, our next uh, Let's Talk It Over webinar. Um, please follow our nursing program of F FMDS on our Facebook uh, for announcement. Um, for the webinar certificate, um, please copy the link and our QR code um, um, for the evaluation is now fly, um, which will be flashed on our screen. So um, again, only those who accomplish the evaluation form shall be issued certificates. And the evaluation link will only be available for 12 hours. Again, this is Lito Rama. Um, thank you everyone and to the MAN program for making this webinar possible. Let's all be safe. Thanks. Thank you.